Well, essentially, the ceasefire deal reflects Azerbaijan's gains on the battlefield, Jeannie, as you mentioned in your introduction. Essentially, Azerbaijan keeps the areas that it has recaptured, the, these are territories that it uh, lost control of in the early 1990s. In addition, Armenia has to hand over regions around Nagorno Karabakh uh, to uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, uh, refugees and internally displaced people uh, are supposed to go back to their homes under the auspices of the UN. We'll have to see exactly how that works out in practice. It's not hammered out in the deal. Um, in terms of Russia's role, which is very interesting here, and also Turkey's, uh, let's show you a map because part of this deal is uh, 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 Russian peacekeepers being deployed. And they are going to guarantee something uh, called the Lachin Corridor, uh, which is uh, essentially a point between Armenia and Azerbaijan. It's a road that links uh, Armenia, the Republic of Armenia, to Stepanakert, which is the de facto capital of the unrecognized uh, Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh. So essentially, Russia is guaranteeing uh, Armenian movement between the Republic of Armenia and uh, Stepanakert. Uh, so that ensures some sort of continued Armenian presence, physical presence in Nagorno-Karabakh. But also looking at the same map, there's another very important development in this deal. Uh, if you look uh, towards the bottom left of the map, you can see Nakhichevan, which is an Azerbaijani exclave. Uh, it borders Turkey, but it also borders Armenia. And up until now, Nakhichevan has had no direct link to uh, the mainland of Azerbaijan, uh, to, the, to the main uh, continental uh, Azerbaijan. And so uh, under, this, uh, uh, under this agreement, Azerbaijan gets for the first time a land link uh, between Nakhichevan and Azerbaijan. This land link, we don't know exactly where it will go through southern Armenia, but clearly it has to go through southern Armenia somewhere. Uh, and this will be seen as a major expansion, I think, of Turkish influence, because what this land cor corridor does is it actually links Turkey uh, to Azerbaijan for the first time. I mean, this deal was brokered by Russia. How big of a diplomatic victory is it for Russia? Well, we always knew, I think, that the big, the two big diplomatic players uh, would be Russia and Turkey in terms of coming out with the contours of a deal. And that is clearly what has happened at the expense of uh, the other main players in the uh, OSCE, that's to say France and the United States. We've seen this pattern before, by the way, Jeannie, in Syria and other places, Erdogan and Putin getting together to try and figure some sort of agreement. This is what has happened over Nagorno-Karabakh as well. Uh, Russian peacekeepers, is that a victory for Russia? It depends how you look at it. Does Russia really want to have another involvement in the South Caucasus? They already have Russian troops in Abkhazia and South Australia. Uh, does Russia want peacekeeping troops mired in Nagorno-Karabakh for potentially decades to come? It depends how you look at it. But I think in the short term, the Russian achievement, if we can call it that, is to weaken Nikol Pashinyan, the prime minister of Armenia. He, of course, came to power in a color revolution uh, in 2018, the kind of color, color revolution that Vladimir Putin has no love of. And what Putin has done, in a sense, is now to uh, weaken Pashinyan. As you mentioned, there are these protests now that have started against Pashinyan. Uh, and uh, he's essentially uh, weakened, uh, Putin, I think, has weakened Pashinyan's position while at the same time making Armenia dependent on Russian peacekeepers for potentially many years to come.